thoughts and uh, things like that. If I could have my slideshow up, that'd be cool. There we go. So basically, um, I delivered this on the 4th to 6th of May at, at Connect uh, from JISC. It's a, a session that I put together for using H5P within Moodle, but you can also use it within other um, VLEs. So the basically what I'm going to be going through today is uh, I'll be looking at uh, H5P because it's in, now embedded in Moodle for those of you who didn't know, uh, uh, but it's also something you can get for free elsewhere. So everything you see today is free, which in FE especially is uh, the buzzword nowadays. Um, so we'll look at things like the presenting tool, uh, the branches scenarios, 360 imagery, and things that, that can be used the, the way that we're using it now is it, they can be presented in class, but they can also be used for flip learning and they can also be used for online learning. And also we're going to start putting together online courses that we can use the different modules for each of them. So we've got quite a bit planned with this. And um, so this is this is just going to be an overview. Um, it's not a how to guide. It's just the things that you might be able to use within your practice if you need to. So, as I mentioned, it's going to be the course presentation tool, interactive videos, quizzes, which are hot uh, question sets, hotspots, branching scenarios, and the integration in, on other platforms. Uh, before we start, I did first of all do this. I work with uh, the Landex group of uh, colleges. We're ag agricultural. So, anybody, I apologize to any vegans or anything like that. There's a lot of bit about farming and things like that, and there's a bit of a cuts of meat so i apologize in advance of any vegans it's not meant to um upset anybody but uh uh please just you know just take that on board so this is me uh, i'm a learning uh, coordinator for the cornwall college group i used to be a landscape gardener and they got too old so i decided to move into education uh, thanks to mr blair in the, in the early 2000s I retrained and I became a e-learning e technologist. Um, I now run a group of three of us and uh, we've got 10 campuses. So you can imagine we've got a lot uh, on our plate. So this is the first thing we're going to do. Uh, I forgot to mention that these actually are links. I don't know if I won't be able to link out to it. So, ah, that's going to be a bit, of, sorry, that's something. Christina, are you there? Colin, if it helps, you can reshare it as your and share your screen so that you can click on the links. Yeah. If you yeah, go back I, to the little square at the bottom, you'll be able to share your application or screen from there. There, this one here. So I'll be able to, sorry, share from where? Doo -doo -doo. It's in the same area where you shared your file, just a couple right of here. options above. All ah, right, yeah, yeah. Share my screen. Right, what I'll do is I'll start up my screen. Sorry, I apologize everybody. First time I've used Blackboard. And don't look at my stuff there. Right, there. And can anybody see my you slides can see now? That perfectly, yeah. You can just see the whole thing? Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's where I was before. So if I move across. So can you see the introduction and support for staff tree training? We can. Cool. Okay. Then. So yeah, these are all actually links. So I forgot about this. I did the same thing, exactly the same thing at Digifest a few years ago. So if I bring that, can you see my Moodle page? We can. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's all right. Then I can go. With. So basically, this was something we've been doing uh, within our teacher training. We've we've been doing a new uh, teacher training package for initial teachers, and so within this, we've been using the presentation tool. This presentation tool allows us to actually make online learning. As I mentioned earlier, it can be delivered as a PowerPoint presentation, but with interactivity, or we can have it as standalone. So in this case, I don't know if you could hear that, that's also got uh, narration, which you can turn on, on and off. No, we've got no sound. Do we have sound? Yeah. So it has narration. So we, we fulfilling our uh, accessibility um, criteria for the fact that people, if, if anybody couldn't have trouble hard of seeing or, or dyslexic. So we're doing that. Um, 
I've got to change this now because it actually is on default and it's quite annoying. So I'm gonna, we're going to we're rechange it because when I first did this, because I am dyslexic myself, I said to my team that I felt that we should do it um, as, as an automatic. This is how it goes automatically. But now I've done it a few more times. I realize that it's quite annoying because I've listened to it so many times. Within this, you can add videos. The videos can also be sub uh, subtitled. So yet again, so we, we're covering all our bases as far as accessibility is concerned. Uh, so this basically they can move through it each time, and everywhere there's a circle, we have questions. So in this case, we can question as we're going along. So we can test knowledge as we, we're going. Um, so in this case. That's the right answer. It gives them feedback, gives, and if it's wrong, it will tell them why they were wrong and gives them actual the feedback if they're wrong as well. And we can move that across through all the different ways. Yeah, the integrated e puzzles, I've just seen that. The integrated e puzzles are great. You can also do a lot more with this. You can have drag and drop. You can have interactive videos within this where you can actually stop the video and ask questions within it, but that you'll see the interactive video. So this presentation tool allows you to have a lot of different kind of things that you can do within it. So yeah, it's, it's a cheap option for some of the really expensive license um, things like Articulate and Captivate. You can do this for free with H5P. So it may not be all bells and whistles like some of the others, but it does give you the option to do more and more things with it. So as I say, you can see now it's quite annoying the fact that it keeps talking all the time. So I will go back to changing that. Um, so that's the presentation tool. We use it for everything we do now. Um, and we're now encouraging all our staff to rather than do presentations is actually try and make these. Because I mentioned earlier, you can use them for three or four different things. You know, we were talking about using six hour courses to bring some ACL funding in. So if, if things like if you're doing horticulture, you could have yeah, see, so, yeah, I love that as well. So you can have six different options, uh, and you can pick and take, and you can make small courses to actually put out as free courses that are online. And we're trying to, you know, for um, doubt into our community uh, offerings as well. But also, we're now looking at having a combined space on Moodle, where if you are a horticulturist, you make your your resources. And because we have three or four different campuses that do a bit of horticulture, we can start sharing resources that way. So rather than the problem with a lot of our tutors at the moment is they go, we haven't got time. And so now I'm trying to encourage them to say, well, if you take one subject within horticulture, you somebody else takes another subject in horticulture, you're making two resources, you're in one part of the time. The sharing has always been a major issue with us at the at at this college, we say we've got 10 campuses across Devon and Cornwall. So, you know, collaboration is a little bit of a tricky thing. So that's a presentation tour. I can answer some more questions on it a little bit later in the session. Um, and from when I did the GS, I had quite a few people email me and ask, and we did some sessions after the session. So, um, so that's the presentation tool. So let's do the next one. So next one is this called interactive video. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do a, done a lot about dairy and, and the farming. We have uh, Stoke Clinsom is something called the Future Farm. This Future Farm is it's one of the first in the country. It is very, very automated. And this video will show you a little bit about it and show you how we use it to capture information from the students. Okay, make that bigger. You'll notice there's little white dots. These white dots signify something that's going to happen within the video. So I'll let this play a little bit and let's see how it goes. So now it'll stop and it'll ask them a question. 
just to make sure that we're checking learning and checking that they've understood. So in this case, does anybody want to hazard the guess for the answer was? Anybody want to put it in the chat? No. Nope. Right well, you should go for it. So actually, we call, it's called Future Farm, and it allows. So then you click on it. It will. Well done. It's time for you to continue. So once you continue, it starts the video again. So in this case now, I'm going to trust them a little bit further by adding a drag and drop situation within this. So in this case, they'll make sure yet again to check that they've actually been listening to what the person said. So in this case, use an automated Trello system. We can then feed three individual groups, respective diets. Monitor the impacts as on production. So there you go. Anybody think I made it? So you, you can see that I got them ones wrong, which I did on purpose, not. But then they can retry it again, or they have the ability now to continue. Yeah, the interactive video is a thing that brings it alive. It, yeah, again, it keeps them focused. It keeps, if you notice also, I, I, we've added subtitle to this again for the accessibility. Um, but in this case, though, the students will. I did one the other day and I asked this question and somebody said, yeah, a lot of slurry, which is true. It is true. They will produce a lot of slurry, but this is useful data. So I won't go any further on that because this goes on for another about uh, another two, two minutes. But yeah, again, you can see that the, the the different uh, approaches that we can use now for the students to get a little bit of different kind of um, learning process. Th this kind of thing can be embedded into the presentation tools earlier as well. So you can actually put interactive videos within the presentation tool and make it a whole thing. But this is just, I just had this standing alone as a standing alone exercise. Subtitles, yep. We put in cap uh, yeah, closed captions and subtitles. We could do that by uh, adding a VTT file to the video, but uh, that's for another day. So we, we've, we've come up with lots of ways that we can now add the accessibility because it's uh, you know it's the watchword of everything about e-learning now. So there's that. I'm running a little bit of time. So you can also have, you saw the, the, um, the quiz sets within the presentation area. You could have that and also in, in a presenting to a presentation tool as well as the video. You can have them stand alone as well. So you can group them up. So you, know, you could have um, a, especially if you're gonna do something like um, assessment uh, revision or before you exams, you could set an exam a certain amount of exams like you can in Moodle, sorry, questions like you can in Moodle. But the, again, with this, you can put videos in, you can start putting stuff in where Moodle's a little bit more uh, restrictive. This becomes a little bit more uh, flashy and you can add bells and whistles to it. And it will also realize if you're using completion tracking in Moodle, for those of you who use Moodle, you can actually set it and say they have to do 80% before they can move on. So you can actually, again, you can capture and see if there's knowledge checks that are happening. So that's the, the beauty about it. all of this talks to the grade book in all the different VLEs that it works within. So the next thing I say, this is where I got, somebody said to me the other day, oh, I don't like to do this because I'm vegan. I apologize if it's that, but uh, yeah, again, because it was a farm, we, we looked at different uh, ways that we could uh, bring 
exercises into the process. Um, there's two kinds of um, hotspots. In the first example, in the first example, we have a single hotspot, and you ask one question. So within, you click anywhere that is not the right answer. It will say no, that's not the right answer. You sit, click on the right answer. He says, it will tell you that you're correct. So you can do this. This is just a single one. So you can do it for um, any kind of just, you can do a set of questions. Or as I'm going to show you the next bit, the one that we found a lot more useful, especially within veterinary and things like that as well. We've been doing stuff uh, on this one. It allows you to label. It allows you then to label your animal and your cuts of meat. So within this one, somebody said to me the other day, oh, you can tell what they are because of the size of them. You can make them smaller or bigger, but I just, I did them size because I, I was just trying to keep it simple. But you can move these to wherever you need them to go. And then they can check as they're going along. And then they can retry. They can do individual ones if they want. Or yet again, as if you're presenting this as a as a tutor, you can use this as a as an uh, thing to use for that as well. So you can you can sit there and you can use it as a an interactive board, and you can discuss the process with your students. So that's. Uh, interactive hotspots. So these are all, as I mentioned again, they're all free. There's stuff that you can do within Moodle. If you haven't got Moodle, if you, cause it's got it in Moodle, you can go to h5p.com, sign up for a free uh, account. You can get your students to sign up for free accounts and they can make their own and send it in as assignments as well. So it is, um, it's an open source software. Go ahead. Yeah, again, sticking with cows, we're looking at scenario branching. Um, this this now allows us to, for those of us older enough to remember the books where you can pick your page and move for your adventure. This is a simple way of doing that. Um, there are more complicated ways of doing it, but with HYP, again, it's free, it's cheap, and it's not that complicated. And you can game start gamification. This is a very, very rudimental one because I put it together very quite, quite quickly. But you would probably, uh, if you were going to do it properly, you would design it. You would put um, a mind map of all the different options you can go to. Uh, I went to a presentation a couple of weeks ago, and this young lady had done a whole escape room kind of game, a scenario branching thing, and she said that it, it was on free piece of A1 paper and she just built this whole thing and that really took the time before actually more so than the uh, making of the process so if we go then so this is a case of what well, the first five stages of milking a cow so you get to select the right answer and when you do you can move on to the next stage so in this case we go to proceed so the first stage of milking a cow is I know the answer because I put it together is stripping the the um, teats and making dispectin right since so you've done really well you've done the right thing now it's time to move on to the second stage in this case I'll do one that's wrong so it goes wrong please try again it then asks you to go back to the question. In this case, it is strip the outer edges and get a couple of squirts of milk. So then it moves on to the third stage. And again, I can get the wrong answer. And then I get the right answer. So they move on.
and then finally so there you go so I've gone through that, that scenario yeah again that's that's a very simple uh, thing that and I put it together within about 10 15 minutes but the more complex you want it to be the more you have to you know decide your your branches uh, and you can even have gamification where you can give more you give um, points and things like that so if they go one way they, they get 10 points and they go the wrong way you minus five points and so that tallies their, their process as well so that's branching scenarios i apologize it's a whistle top tour it's, it's you know it's a, a big subject and and i'm quite happy for anybody to get in touch afterwards and say can we have a, a little bit more of a chat about how this is all done Uh, yes, they can. They do feedback results to the VLE. Everything in H5P has the ability to go back to the grade book. But with, with the scenarios, you'd have to make sure you had the point systems. So you, you would start to work out what you wanted for. I'll have a look at it in a bit. It's a bit too long, really. So this is, um, so we're moving on to 360 imagery. We uh, we use a couple of things for this. Uh, I don't know if anybody used Thingling. Thingling is probably our preferred method of using it because uh, you can add videos and things like that. But with H5P, within Moodle or with VLEs, um, it is very, again, a nice, simple way to set up tours around. And we're lose, using quite a lot of these 360 um, tours for free for students before they start come to college let's make it big and so we put on our open open moodle so they before they come they can have a look at our, our areas um it was something that we picked up from Ofsted Ofsted you know especially our foundation learning students so we could give them some more confidence before they got here it was we would try to look and see if we can build that show their areas off to them so they're more familiar so within this one we can have a 360 we got a 360 camera there's a kodak it's about 200 pound it's not a great deal of money um and we just go around and we can we can take the pictures and within this we can then add stuff so in this case we've got the metal press so you can see that the images within this also you can add text and things like that um say so the biggest drawback is that we can't this moment in time put in any kind of uh, video which is a shame but i say we do use other things for that kind of thing but it allows you to walk around but yeah again this is something that we took the video we took the picture we put it into moodle into h5p there was no real rendering and then all we had to do was add the different hotspots around we want to so you can move between transition between sequence or you can add stuff within the process i'll catch up with that i couldn't see exactly what that before it disappeared so do 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 As I mentioned earlier, that, that, that was just a whistle stop tour. When I did it for, uh, I had a 30 minute presentation with 10 minutes, 15 minutes uh, questioning afterwards. So I'm sorry, it's been a quite a quick zip through. Um, but as I see there, there's three types of H5P integration besides in Moodle. As I mentioned, if you go to h5p.com, you can get direct links or embed it from there. We used to have it on a, um, on a website uh, and we used to, to get it in from there uh, but uh, we found sometimes that that would fall over a bit because it was on a WordPress site and if WordPress went down we lost it so when they they did mention that Mo because we moved Mo let's say mentioned it at a Moodle MOOC a few years ago there was a great you know cheer because it's there you have a content bank that can then be just held within your VLE uh, Blackboard and Canvas, uh, they've got ILTI uh, 
stuff that you can get from that you just get the code and, and put it into Blackboard and Canvas. Uh, and so there's other some of the other VLEs have plugins for H5P as well. So I know it's whistle top tour, but um, if I start, you know, can we have any questions or can we uh, can get the questions from? Chat. You've got one question, Colin, from Anne. She's asked you about yep. um, inserting content. Can you insert more than one content item at a time? I can select each item. I have eight of them to insert into Blackboard Ultra via LTI, or am I best to use the presentation tool and put all the items in that presentation? I, I tend to. I'd say I meant to. I tend to put it into the presentation tool. Because yet again, you can then you can put the different aspects. You can move around, and you can almost think of it as a a lateral flow across a and you know what we look at is an hour, and so you've got an hour's worth of, of content. So within that, you could say right, you could have this. A, a thing I didn't mention in there is there's something called export text as well. So uh, we've got a, a member of staff at Nuki now is is basically doing it. What he does, he's in presentation tool. He'll put his videos are interactive that he does he does himself in front of a board and he looks at it and goes, you know, and, he, and then he, get, he delivers his lesson but in that lesson he will ask questions um, and then he'll have something called exportable text and he'll ask them to write their thoughts about it and right at the end it you can if he does it quite a few times he can export that out to word and it will also take out your um, quizzes as well and add your quizzes to it and so you've got the whole thing about the whole process and then right at the end what we do is we get them to upload their work and as, as an assignment you can't do it via h5p but you can have it as an assignment thing yeah so there you go and yeah so basically the presentation tool we use presentation tool most of the time now it is the one thing that we use so i've got any more questions that i can see Ah, are the transcripts automatically from H5B or do you upload it separately? I, did I, Diana, did I mention that? We use, we use um, basically, I, I've got a couple of things. Um, we use Otter AI, if anybody knows about it. Um, that transcribes any kind of video. So you put it through Otter AI, you get 600 minutes a month free. And then that transcript can be, um, taken out of the Otter AI as an SRT file. SRT files work on YouTube, Planet EStream, and others. H5P use VTT files, so we just got to go for another process where we convert the SRT file into a VV, VTT file. There's loads of converters out there, and then you just add that to it, and it, it all the time is coming in, and it's automatic. Does that does that help, Diana? Can you use it one content? How long does it take uh, an academic to create an interactive presentation? That that's yeah. How long is a piece of string, Meg? Um, what we do as a team, we we go out. We encourage. We're running these sessions through our team TLA, which is our, our teaching and learning department. They then get the uh, members of staff interested in it. They will come to us for a second catch up. A little bit like what we're doing now. They they deliver a presentation, then I'll go back and 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 mop it up and spend a whole day at the at the campus, and we'll sit and talk about it. And the SMEs will come and say, "This is this and this and this." And then as a group, there's three of us. We'll take it away and we'll actually make the, we offer to make the sessions for them. So the SMEs give us all the information, and then we build it because at the moment in in um, in the presentation tool we use um a template so we have a template for most things where we just can then clone the slides so things like the backwards and forwards next and previous are on one screen and then we clone it so that we don't have to keep reproducing that kind of stuff so in average i had this conversation with somebody yesterday if they give us um enough content for an hour i would say that we could probably can produce it in about 45 minutes 
But yeah, again, it's, it's coming from the SMEs are, are the sticking point, as they mostly say is that, oh yeah, it'd be great, but I haven't got the time. So trying to convince them that, you know, you've already got your PowerPoint that you're using, you're already doing stuff, delivering stuff. Um, so if you just give it that, and then what we do is we'll, we'll create a, a prototype and then we'll go back to them and go, right, what do you think? They will then say, can you change this, this, and this? And then we're in the next iteration, we'll, we'll carry on in a bit like an adding methodology where we, we would um, carry on until we got to the stage where everybody was happy. I hope that makes sense. Do you know if there's any ways of importing PowerPoint slides into Visual? That that's as I mentioned, Leslie. That's something we get and we just copy and paste into presentation tool. It is you know we'll take any kind of information, any kind of so you can't take it and unlike Articulate and and and, and Adobe Captivate, you can't. You can't just put a, me a presentation in and it will convert it. You have to be uh, a little bit more smarter. And as a team, we do that. Hope that helps that one. Yeah, so uh, yeah, again, Meg, as I mentioned, the uh, export tool allows you to do that. Another thing we do is also at the end of a lot of ours in the plenary, we, we, we may be we'll have an ex uh, export text box but then we should also probably put a link out to uh, um, MS form so we collect you know, stuff from uh, feedback from them. So when we evaluate, we can look and if anybody says, you know, this was a bit this or we could do with doing that, then we can actually evaluate and then go back and improve the process. So it's, it's yeah, again, it's a constant thing. You don't, it doesn't sit. We'll, we'll sit and we'll, we'll have a routine and we go, right, that resource was made six weeks ago, we'll have another look at it, we'll see what the feedback is. We're, we're in a situation as a team, we're learning so quickly that we we can't even integrate new stuff into old things because we are uh, into old um, sessions because we're doing so many different things differently now and we've got better ideas. So we sometimes have to make the whole thing again. Uh, we had a safeguarding one the other week where we'd been using it about six months ago we created it and then they wanted a new part put in and we couldn't fit it in because it was completely different and looked different so we had to re re reinvent it all uh, are there any hacks that you know of where Vimeo videos could embed rather than YouTube videos being created um, I think I'm pretty sure it allows you to do video um, Vimeo Vimeo or YouTube I'm pretty sure if you use the URL to be blatant honest here, we try to use videos that we've got ourselves because that makes life a lot easier because if you put YouTube stuff in, like you all probably know, people can bring them down or you can lose them or they, and let's say that breaks your link. So we try to, you know, if we can um, get our own, if we can in-house, if not, then, you know, we, we possibly go to the, you know, we usually go to the, the contributor and ask if we can take it off and use it that's we their, their permission usually yeah yeah we well, yeah the it does the creating the presentation template makes life so much easier for us it really is it just it speeds our work up completely aren't they and is there a... that one i couldn't tell you and about the lts and super user accounts uh, probably not. I think it's just going to be, yeah. I, I, yeah. Again, I, the, the, that's not a thing that we. I know we've looked into. I looked into it for this reason, because I was delivering this. But um, it's not my. It's not my speciality, I'm afraid. So, any more for anyone? I think I've got everybody in the questions. I think you've got all of the questions, Colin. <laughs> yeah, so there's my details. If anybody wants to take it down and have a chat, um, I, you know, I'm a bit nerdy like a lot of us. Uh, I see electronic technologists and things like that. I love to chat to others. And yet again, I don't mind showing off my wares. That's the reason why I put my name forward to do this. Um, I'm not forward to coming back. I'm not backward to coming forward. Thanks, Rob. That's great. I'm glad you enjoyed it.
Thank any more you. for any more. That was a really interesting presentation. I can see a lot of people going to look and use this resource themselves. Um, if you're happy for me to, I'll end the recording now. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's fine by me. Thank you.